Every decade is defined by something, maybe a technology or a resource or a political movement. For this decade, that something is chips, tiny but powerful semiconductors. They're part of everything that we use, cars, weapons, gadgets, you name it and there's a chip inside. So every country is trying to gain a foothold in this industry, the chip industry, every country including India. Today, Prime Minister Narendra Modi participated in a special event. It's called India's Techade. Now, don't go Googling what a Techade is. It's basically a combination of tech and decade. Tech aid. India wants to use chips to power its economic growth, to become a key player in this industry. Today's event marked a big step in that journey. The Prime Minister laid the foundation stone for three chip projects. The first one is in Gujarat, a chip fabrication plant set up by the Tata Group. Total investments around $10 billion. This will be India's first chip fabrication plant. The second project is in Assam. Again, it is being set up by the Tata Group. Total investments around $3.2 billion. This facility will assemble chips. And finally, the third project located in the city of Sanand in Gujarat. It's being set up by CG Power and Industrial Solutions. Total investment around $1 billion. So that's three chip projects put together. They are worth some $15 billion. But the government is just getting started here. Prime Minister Modi says India will soon become a chip power. Bharat Pahlegi, a space, nuclear, or digital power hai. Aane wale samay mein, hum semiconductor sector se jude, products ka, commercial production karenge, wo din dur nahi. It's not just a vision, it's a strategic necessity. Because chips are the building blocks of modern life, so you cannot depend on others for them. If you do, you will be at their mercy. And we've seen this happen before. Just consider the social media revolution of the last decades. American firms dominated that period, and Indian firms, nowhere in the picture. India had no answer to WhatsApp or Instagram or Twitter. India still doesn't have an answer. And look at the result. These companies sidestep Indian regulation. They do little to fight fake news. Yet they milk the Indian market. Some Asian challengers did emerge, the biggest being TikTok. TikTok was created by a company based in China. TikTok managed to challenge and beat American tech firms, American social media platforms. But look at it now. The U.S. is on the verge of banning TikTok. India has already banned it, and other Western countries have partially banned it. Now, TikTok is not exactly innocent here, but you get the drift. The U.S. and its social media firms have fiercely guarded this industry. They won't let others succeed, which is why sovereign platforms are so important. A strong, homegrown industry. That's what the Indian government is now aiming for. Prime Minister Modi also hinted at this. He said India missed the bus during the previous industrial revolutions and a repeat must be avoided. Pahli, dousri, or tisri, audyogi kranti ke samay, Bharat anek karano se piche reha gaya tha. Lekin ab Bharat, industry 4.0, how feasible is this dream though? As always, there are challenges and advantages. Let's look at the advantages first. India doesn't have geopolitical stigma. We are not China. Western powers see China as a revisionist country, as a strategic rival. But they see India as a partner. So Western powers are helping New Delhi create new supply chains. One such deal was signed last year, the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework. India, the US and 12 others agreed to diversify supply chains. And that's a big advantage. 
The second advantage is skilled labor. 68% of India's population is in the working age. That's around 900 million people. And to make more chips, you need more workers. Of course, you have to skill them and train them. Now we come to the challenges. The chip industry can be divided into three parts, designing, manufacturing, and assembling. If you want the big money, you must design. That's the most skillful part of this industry, also the most lucrative, designing a chip. But most of the chip designing is done in the United States by companies like Intel and Nvidia. They're now worth billions of dollars. Manufacturing a chip brings in less money and assembling it even less. Now, I'm not saying that these are not important, manufacturing and assembling. But if you want to be self-reliant, you need all three. As of now, India isn't there. We are mostly focusing on manufacturing and assembly. But as they say, you have to start somewhere. You can't become a chip superpower overnight. It will take time and investments. We are talking about a structural change here. You must convince students to learn about chips. You must convince companies to invest in them. You must convince state governments to give incentives. And you must convince foreign companies and players to come to India. It's going to be a long process. The good news is the government is thinking in the right direction. Just consider today's event, the Indian Tech Aid Show. It had thousands of students attending virtually. They logged in from different cities and colleges. The key is to sustain this. And at the same time, keep an eye on the horizon because technology will not end with chips. There, there will be more advanced products and industries coming up. We need to identify and invest in them. If not, we will be stuck in catch-up mode.